What is going on guys, Bengal again here, coming at you with a video you had to know is coming. The rebuild of the Arizona Cardinals featuring J.J. Watt. So we're going to have to be uh, doing something to get him. I don't know if that means switching to the Texans and then releasing J.J. Watt and then signing him with the Cardinals. I think that's probably what I'll do. So if you guys are new here, you know, hit that subscribe button for more videos such as this. Uh, a lot of rebuilds and stuff in the offseason, of course, NFL content, draft content as well. So... I'm just gonna hop in here, make that trade, and then hop over to the Cardinals. So I will see you for the Cardinals roster breakdown, which happens to be a lot different than the actual breakdown that the Texans roster had, which was, <laughs> and will continue to happen when uh, Deshaun Watson leaves their team. So of course, the first thing I have to do is actually cut JJ Watt. No cap penalty, that's great for the Texans, but uh, I don't care about the Texans. I'm gonna go over and be the Cardinals. The way you do that, if you ever want to change your guy is you can just hit retire and then you don't retire from the league you just create a new character and then you can create whatever new coach you want on whatever team you want this feels laggy at least it did there's a lot of noise going on outside i don't know if you guys could hear that it is loud so what i'm going to do is just sign jj watt straight up i uh, can't negotiate that but what i will do is change it to the actual contract he did get in real life which is two years 31 million dollars and then we will advance to the offseason. I gave J.J. Watt his two years, $31 million. And I'm also going to change his whatever. Can, can they stop doing heavy construction outside? I don't even know if you guys can hear that. Hopefully my mic's great enough so it doesn't even come up. I might end up switching to a 4-3 to just have Chandler Jones, J.J. Watt both play on the edge. Maybe even J.J. Watt's a rush D tackle if I'm able to retain and re-sign Hassan Reddick. Also something I'm definitely going to consider. What type of money? are we looking at to bring Hassan Reddick back? He's going to be fairly expensive. But, I mean, I would definitely do that deal if he gets $11.4 million for the first year cap hit. We have the money. It's almost $80 million over five. That's fairly affordable. And Hassan Reddick is back. Only 26 years old. Superstar dev. Kenyon Drake as well. We'll have to make a decision on. But if we look at this team... The offense is looking pretty good. The offensive line isn't terrible. Lamont and Guy Lard is going to be my starting center. We have DJ Humphreys. Some of these guys are older. I need to get out of here. Like Justin Pugh is not exactly developing anymore. He's 31 years old. Mason Cole isn't old, but just isn't good. So Guy Lard maybe will play there. J.R. Sweezy's old. Kelvin Beecham's old. And then a tight end. Like Dan Arnold's okay in real life. He's not that great in the game. Max Williams isn't that great in the game. A lot of these guys just aren't that great in the game. Christian Kirk probably should be fine. Only 24 years old. He'll end up being pretty good, I think. And then we need a third receiver. Maybe even need a running back. Because I don't really want to pay Kenyon Drake big bucks. Might have to. And then defensively, Isaiah Simmons will move to linebacker. And that will work especially well in the 4-3. Devontae Campbell, outside linebacker, or traded. Jordan Hicks up the middle. It could be worse. It could be worse. Safety outside of Buda Baker is not amazing. We have Deontay Thompson, Chris Banjo, and Jalen Thompson. Jalen Thompson should be okay. And then a cornerback, Pat Pete's gone. I think Drake Kirkpatrick's gone, and we really only have Byron Murphy. So there is kind of a big rebuild that needs to be done. A lot of older players that are going to, uh, that are going to regress a lot, and a lot of new fresh faces to bring in and improve this team. So it should be a fun one. I am moving to a 4-3. Hopefully it works out great. I don't know whether to move J.J. Watt to defensive tackle. That's certainly in consideration. And then play Hassan Reddick on the edge at left end. And then have J.J. Watt. He'd be a rush D tackle anyway with Jordan Phillips. And then Chandler Jones, Hassan Reddick. I'm, I'm not sure what to do just yet. I think that's going to be the best move because Corey Peters isn't good. Richard Lawrence, D'Amato Pecco not good and then isaiah simmons is going to move down to play outside linebacker i got to trade devondre campbell anyway i'm just not quite sure how to handle this just yet i think the best move to get hassan reddick the most pass rush snaps is to just play him at a d tackle and play hassan reddick at left end so executive decision in the four three we changed scheme so that's just what's going to happen so the pass rusher should be set Hassan Reddick moving down the left end. Got JJ up the middle. Chandler Jones at right end. I think that's a pretty good defensive line. Jordan Phillips isn't great. Devondre Campbell's not great. I don't know what to do with some of these guys. They're all scheme fits. It's great. 
It's a great fit. But uh, he's 28. He's just not going to be any good. Uh, Jordan Hicks, kind of in the same boat. He's 29. He's going to start to regress pretty big. We got to get younger. Kenyon Drake. I'd give you like three years. I don't really want to have him on the team for more than that. Ideally, nah, I'm not going to sign him. If I want a running back, I'll just get a better one in free agency for probably about the same. Pat Pete's going to go. Marcus Golden gone. Corey Peters gone. Drake Kirkpatrick, St. Gonzalez gone. Devondre Campbell's actually a free agent. He is someone that I would give like a one-year deal to and overpay him to keep him and then trade him. He's going to test free agency. That's fine. I'm not going to compete. I'm going to let him just go then. We're just going to overturn and overhaul the roster. So a lot of these guys are just going to go. I'm going to let them go. And I'm going to build up the team. I need to see what our salary situation is going to look like because Chandler Jones, I know, is getting paid a lot. But he's only under contract for one more year. DJ Humphreys has a monster contract. JJ Watt, of course, as well. 15 for this year and next. And then Hassan Reddick, we just paid a lot. DeAndre Hopkins is super expensive in the coming years. Man, we're going to have some problems. Jordan Phillips has to get traded. Justin Pugh, I'm going to either cut or trade. Jordan Hicks, I'm probably going to end up trading as well. Robert Alford is probably just going to get cut. Yeah, this is, uh, this is annoying. We have no corners. It's not like I can just cut him and then have someone to play there. But he's also super bad. He's just going to have to stick around and we just won't end up re-signing him. I always sign Shaquille Griffin lately, but it, I'm always on a team that needs corners. And Shaq Griffin is just always a really nice fit. He isn't super expensive. He usually gets pretty good. He's someone I always want to make a point of paying because, you know, young, great development trait, decent overall. It's a real big help. Real big help. And Levante David is also someone I'm considering. Only two years is not too much. It's not too much. For just two years and uh we can have a great middle linebacker instead of jordan hicks i love jordan hicks hook him horns of course but he's just too old no one's going after desmond king it's my slot corner i'd love that did we get anyone okay oh man the desmond king contract snipe was great because he's getting paid nothing we got shaq griffin and levante david the defense just kind of went from zero to hero zero to hero in a second desmond king slot corner Shaquem Griffin, starter. Byron Murphy, third. That's fine. Tavon Kennard starting at right outside linebacker is not exactly ideal. But I guess for now, Jordan Hicks can move to the outside. And maybe I'll just trade him. Also got to download my draft class. Well, I already have it downloaded, but I recently updated it. PS5, it's called 2021 Draft Bengal now. Or Bengal 2021 Draft. I think it's like the fifth or sixth most, da most downloaded under the PSN Gene Dangus. So this has been updated lately just for uh, those who care. We're going to check out running back. It's a position of need. So the guys I really need to trade because they get super expensive if I don't, Justin Pugh and Jordan Phillips. I will say that Devondre Campbell is also someone I need to trade. Where is he? Where'd he go? Oh, he's gone. I mean, Jordan Hicks. Um, so if I can find a team that wants these fellas and I can get a decent player back, that'd be great. Like, Derwin James would be incredible. Oh, and it could happen. It could happen as well. Joey Bosa would be okay. Keenan Allen would be super cool as well. That's not going to happen, but Derwin James certainly could. I'm going to say that maybe Jordan Phillips has the least amount of trade value. And I might have to add in number 16 overall. What about a future one? I'd be way more comfortable doing that. And boom, it's done. Justin Pugh, Jordan Hicks, and a first-round pick next year for Derwin James. He can easily be a starting safety, whether it's free or strong. It is a major upgrade to the team. Now, linebacker becomes kind of a big point of emphasis now. The need to upgrade. Like, maybe it would have been better to go after a player like Kenneth Murray on that team. But I am super, super happy with getting Derwin James. Really versatile type player. Deemed to be run support. I'm not really even sure I agree with that. I want Buda Baker maybe at free safety. Would that be better? I don't know if it would. I think maybe maybe Duran James moves to free safety. Linebacker could be fun. I mean, he's 215 pounds, but 6'2", so it doesn't really fit as well. 
I think I think Derwin James is going to end up moving to uh, to free safety. You know what's funny though is I bet that Kenneth Murray is tougher to trade for than uh, the Derwin James, which makes no sense other than he was a first round pick. Is there any way I can get him? I don't think so because I'm not trading Derwin James back to them. Do they want Deontay Thompson? Kind of. I just don't think it's going to happen. Oh, okay, that trade just went through. So that's both good and bad. Jordan Phillips is gone. Deontay Thompson's gone. And my first round pick is gone. Now, I do get Kenneth Murray in this big two-part trade. Of course, uh, the Giants and Browns pulled off a similar one in the past. It, like, it was the Olivier Vernon slash kind of Odell Beckham Jr. for, uh, who was it? We had a first round pick, Jabril Peppers, and Kevin Zeitler ended up coming over as well in that trade. An interesting one, but Kenneth Murray is a really, really good player. And it almost makes me want to move Levante David to outside linebacker. So I'm going to do that. I forgot they drafted Josh Jones. He fell all the way to like, what, the third or fourth round? Josh Jones has some potential. I'm going to play him at right tackle. That There are worse starters out there. He's young. There's, a, there's something there, maybe. Can I trade anything else, or am I just going to have a terrible offensive line still? I have no money. We're in a bit of a tough spot. I need, I need maybe to trade up in the second round, like top of the second, because we could still get a really good player like Najee Harris or Travis Etienne at the top of the second, probably. I don't know. I don't really have a ton of trade pieces. I kind of traded them all. Man, Devon Kennard's kind of expensive for someone who just isn't it for me. Justin Murray, why are you getting that deal? I'm just going to cut him straight away. But I need to trade... Devon Kennard. And is there anyone else? Robert Alford still. No one's going to want him. Maybe Max Williams or Chase Edmonds has value. Ooh, Patriots have some interest. Give me pick number 15 for Max Williams and Devon Kennard. I'll also give you a pick. How about a fifth? Yeah, enjoy that. Max Williams, Devon Kennard, and a fifth for number 15 overall from the Patriots. So that's just swell. And then maybe I'll trade uh, Chase Edmonds away. Is there anyone else that has value? Oh yeah, Robert Alford. No one's gonna want him. There's no way he has any interest from anyone. Falcons have green interest in Chase Edmonds. Are they sure? Chase Edmonds for a second? Nah, all right. I think Robert Alford actually was on the Falcons for a pretty long time. At least four years, right? Six years, actually, for Alfred in Atlanta. Didn't even play last year. But if I can get him away and a seventh for number 35? Ah, okay. What about a fifth next year? What about a fourth next year? Still worth it to me if I can get one of the better running backs. That trade is accepted. So at number 15, what do we really need? Could be a big receiver if one falls. There goes Wyatt Davis. Could be... I'm not taking an offensive lineman here. Well, maybe I am. I don't know. It's pretty bad. Maybe tight end if Kyle Pitts is somehow available. I like the defensive line for the most part. I like the defense in general. If there's a great D-tackle available, which there isn't, it's this 2021 draft class. There's no, like, stud D-tackle. I think I have to go offense. Wide receiver, tight end, O-line, running back. Jalen Waddles available. Uh, what are you doing to me? How do I not? Najee Harris is here. Trading number 35, a third next year, and a seventh this year throw in to move up to number 33. So we're giving up a little bit, but I want the first pick in the second round to guarantee I get a shot at one of the great uh, running backs in this class, which is either Etienne or Harris. One of them, if not both of them, will be available. And how can I not take Jalen Waddle here? I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> Jalen Waddle's a monster. And... I love him. <laughs> we all know this by now. And also, he'd be a really, really good addition to the Cardinals offense. Really uh, help out in that track team that they're building. They get some guys that can fly. Waddle joins Andy Isabella, who's got shocking speed. 
Kenyon Drake also, if he sticks around in real life, is very, very fast as well. Kyler Murray, of course, one of the faster QBs in the league. And we will simulate to number one overall in the first round. What running back is available? It's both of them. Who do I want? Najee Harris is here. I've taken him recently, but I think we traded him away. Never really used him. And then Travis Etienne is a scheme fit and available. But I'm going to go with... I kind of just want to go Najee Harris. I'll go Travis Etienne. I don't know if I've drafted him yet this year. So we'll go Etienne, even though I like Najee Harris a bit better in real life. Etienne's a, a really, really solid player. And the newest addition to this Arizona Cardinals team. And there goes Najee, the pick before me. Chivante Williams is available. He's a solid player. Uh, I think we need to go... We don't really need to go corner. I traded for some. But there are some good corners available. Could go Osa Odigazua if I want to upgrade maybe a D-tackle. What do we need the most? I think offensive line should certainly be in play. There are some good ones. I might just go Liam Eikenberg or something like that. Or Trey Smith. What do I have at guard? It's, it's got to be O-line here. All right, Trey Smith. Only normal dev. Unfortunate. But I like Trey Smith. Maybe should have gone de -ta or left tackle instead, but went offensive guard. And I like Trey Smith. It's a good addition to the team. It's an upgrade. And if a guy like Brevin Jordan is available in the third, I'll probably take him. Tight end's a really weak position for me right now. Damn, the tight ends are corner still available. But there's Brevin Jordan. Said I would take him, and I am going to. Welcome to the team, Brevin Jordan. Really versatile type guy for the Miami Hurricanes. And he is now on the Cardinals. And that's the last pick I have. So I've decided to arrange the team like this. Levante David, I'm not having as one of the top two sub linebackers because he's 31 and Kenneth Murray and Isaiah Simmons have a ton of room to develop. So I want them to be playing as much as possible. Levante David is still a starting outside linebacker. Just won't come in in those sub packages because I want Simmons and Murray to get as much XP as possible. Defense looks very, very good. And then the offense kind of has a long way to go. We got some young players on this offensive line. All is not lost. Receiver's great. We got Etienne as a starting back. He's going to be just terrible for the first two or three years minimum. <laughs> just because it's Madden and younger running back or lower overall running backs just don't perform well. They need to be a certain higher overall. And um, yeah, I'm actually super excited about this team. Might not be unbelievable in year one, but it also could be because our defense is great. You know we're going to perform well since I changed the uh, Arizona Cardinals playbook to the Titans. The Cardinals playbook is by far the worst playbook in the game. You will have the worst offense in the league every year. The Cardinals, with a great overall every year in Sim, have a top five pick. Usually up near the top three and sometimes number one overall. The Cardinals are so bad in simulation. Hit that subscribe button if you're new for just me choosing a new playbook every single time. We're three and four. Knew that was a possibility. It's a really, really competitive division. Bunch of really good teams. Chandler Jones wants a new contract. What's our overall compared to the 49ers? Very comparable right now. And the 49ers should be one of the better overall teams in the league. So we are uh, we're pacing pretty well, I would say, so far. And we have some big time free agents. That's why I needed to cut a bunch of guys so I could free up some money. But we need uh, Derwin James, Chandler Jones back for sure. Christian Kirk probably. I mean, I already know Jalen Waddle has superstar X Factor, but I'll show you. Uh, Chandler Jones, a three-year deal is fine. He is at the uh, age of regression for superstar X Factor, I believe. But that that's okay. He should be decent enough for the next three. Derwin James, I want to sign. Yeah, six-year contract's fine. Uh, he's really, really good. We want to keep him around. He is back. And then Christian Kirk is a really solid third option. But that's a lot of money. So, unsure about that at the moment. Here you can see Jalen Waddle. He's going to be superstar X-Factor, of course. And uh, I'll give him Route Runner. He's up to an 80 overall. I'll change his superstar X-Factor uh, ability to... Let's do... What's Rack him Up? Seems like that could be pretty good. And we'll give him Route Technician as well. Also... Jalen Waddle wearing a number in the 80s just doesn't sit right with me. No 17 available, so number 11 will have to do. Doesn't really matter. But this is the team. Christian Kirk. Not sure if he's going to be a part of it. I'm going to spend some coach XP and then simulate to the playoffs. What do I want here? Let's do linebacker training boost. And then I want O-line as well. 
some of those guys could be starters for us in the future. But playoff time, might miss it. But next year, I think we should be participating for sure. And we still might make it this year. We did actually end up making the playoffs, 9-7. and seven. Love to see that. Weird kind of view of the locker room with nobody in there. But I don't know. Something's off about it. But we did make the playoffs, 9-7, and seven, even won the division. 19th best offense. 19th isn't great. But Kyler Murray was decent enough. Not a ton of passing touchdowns. Hopefully made up for it in other ways as a runner. Over 4,100 passing yards rushing. Travis Etienne was terrible. Kyler Murray didn't do too much as a runner himself. And then receiving Jalen Waddell, 85 catches for 1,300 yards and nine touchdowns. DeAndre Hopkins was also great. Nuke always does pretty well. Three touchdowns over 1,000 yards. Brevin Jordan was really solid as a rookie. Really solid. Christian Kirk was okay as well. That's why I don't really want to resign him, though. And then Kenneth Murray, look at this year. 125 tackles, 10 for loss, four and a half sacks, 10 and a half sacks for Isaiah Simmons. What? What is going on with these numbers? 17 sacks for Hassan Reddick. Oh my God. 13 and a half for Chandler Jones, 10 and a half for Simmons randomly. He was just a monster. 10 and a half for JJ Watt, seven for Zach Allen. How many sacks did we have? Four picks for Buda Baker, two for Desmond King. Was our defense the best of all time? Had to have been. Where do we rank in terms of yards? Let's see here. Second, who could have been better? Points per game. We were actually not near the top. Do we allow a lot of points? Did I just miss it? I probably missed it because I'm blind. Oh, there we are, fourth. 70 sacks? Second place had 51. The difference between third and second is three. The difference between second and first is 19. 70 sacks. I've never seen anything so crazy. 70. I am in, in case you guys care, it is Cincinnati Bengals playbook and base 4-3. And oh my goodness, I might need to run this more often. The, granted, we've got some really great players on the defense, but Isaiah Simmons at right outside linebacker getting 10 and a half sacks for no reason is wild. Inexplicable, you might say. I have no idea how that happened, but we'll check out the stats here. We might have some contenders for defensive player of the year. Josh Allen wins MVP. Uh, no Cardinals in there until number 10. Kyler Murray at number 10. NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Cam Newton, who always does amazing in sim. Kyler Murray at five. Defense Player of the Year is Deion Jones. Only one Cardinal in there. It's Isaiah Simmons. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Trey Lance with the Eagles. Jalen Waddle at two. Travis Etienne at four. Brevin Jordan at seven. Defense Rookie of the Year is Cameron McGrone, staying in state in Michigan, going up to Detroit. And then no Cardinals. I don't know if we even started a rookie, so that makes sense. I need to see what Cam Newton's traits are because there's, there's something about him in simulation, no matter what team he's on, that just makes him play amazingly. And I don't know what it is. Balanced QB style, ideal sense of pressure could be good. He forces passes aggressively, tight spiral. It has to come down to the traits. I don't know what else it could be. He's unbelievable every year. These are real life numbers, so who cares? But what is it about him that makes him play so, 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 so well in simulation? I have no clue. What does Kyler Murray have? He's got tight spiral. He's got ideal forcing passes. I almost want to change his sense of pressure to ideal just to see how that changes things. I would love for a subscriber to test those things individually and get back to me. You'd be doing a great service. But uh, it's very, very strange how Cam Newton is amazing every year. We'll see if we can beat his team in the playoffs, and we do. Beat them 16-10. to 10. Pretty boring game. And now the Cowboys in the divisional. Let's see if we can go through them as well. And we do. 17-10. Another boring game, but our defense is so good. I assume it's just carrying our team a lot. Let's do zone. Get that upgraded for Buda Baker. Plus three zone coverage. That is fantastic. And then I'm tempted to jump in here, man. At Lambeau Field, but no, I'll simulate to the Super Bowl. It's only season one, and we did not make it unfortunate unfortunate were we close at least Let's see the team schedule because we really had a decent second half of the year only one loss in there after week 11 
where we uh, lost to the Titans. But uh, postseason, 28 to 12. Offense just didn't perform. It's kind of what it came down to. Didn't perform ever in the playoffs. It was our defense carrying pretty hard. Let me see some dev trade increases, though. Would love to see some upgrades. Travis Etienne, star dev. JJ Watt playing fullback. That's interesting, I guess. And then defensively, Kenneth Murray goes up to superstar. That's awesome. We love to see that. Uh, Buda Baker went up to superstar X Factor. Also love to see that. Training boost. I'm going to do offensive line, defensive line, DB, and save the rest probably for quarterback. But we got the big ones uh, squared away from players that I really need to see develop. But all in all, pretty good year, all things considered. NFC Championship appearance. A lot of players getting a lot better. Browns just smash the Packers. As I'm going to have to let Christian Kirk go. He's just not worth the contract when I can get other guys in there. He's fairly replaceable. So we'll just go ahead and simulate to free agency here and see who we're going to be able to bring in. Should have a decent amount of money. I feel like we've managed it really well. 30 mil. Yet, like, players are getting super, super expensive. And I assume Levante David probably just regressed quite a bit. He's down to an 85. That's a major, major, major drop off. Okay. I don't like that. <laughs> but he's only on the team for one more year. So this is kind of our window to win a Super Bowl. So let's try and do it. It might involve trading Jalen Thompson. That's probably what needs to happen. My backup free safety, who is good, but he's not really playing a role right now. Jair Alexander's here. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to pass on him, but Aaron Jones is here. And that's someone I absolutely want to target. He's expensive, but he's really, really good at a pretty big position of deed right now. Von Miller, I'm not going to go after. We need offensive linemen so bad, and no one's going after Mitchell Schwartz. No one's going after Wyatt Teller. I need to offer them contracts. Ronnie Harrison's got superstar uh, development. That's crazy. Playing a dangerous game here, not offering like big contracts to these guys, but hopefully they just sign them, try and compete for a Super Bowl. Having those offensive linemen join the team would be awesome. We got Wyatt Teller. We got all of them. Mitchell Schwartz and Aaron Jones. So this team, again, it wasn't at zero, but it, it it's even further up the hero leaderboard. I don't know what, you know what I'm saying. Like, it got even better. I could have just said that. Probably would have been a better idea. But this team just got way better. Trey Smith, starting left guard for sure. Lamont Guilard, he's okay. He's okay, but we didn't really have much in the way of a right guard or a right tackle. And then now we just have two of the best in the league in Wyatt Teller and Mitchell Schwartz. DJ Humphreys is great at left tackle. Great is being used uh, in an interesting way there. I wouldn't say it's great, but it, it's quite good. Our defense does look great, though. And there's no reason that we can't be unbelievable, even better, in year two of this rebuild. I would like a first-round pick this year. I think I traded it away, right? Maybe Jalen Thompson gets me one. And, of course, we're going to pick up the fifth-year option on Kyler Murray just put off paying him a little while longer at least i also just saw david njoku sitting in free agency i offered him a really bad contract but it's all i can afford hopefully he signs and it seems as if he is not so i don't really know what to do about that but it is nfl draft time might as well start the nfl draft i don't really even know what position we need our offense is great our defense is great i mean we could use another tight end. Maybe best offensive lineman available. And then on defense, maybe an outside linebacker to replace Levante David in the near future. Either way, it probably involves trading Jalen Thompson. Defensive tackle as well. I could see that being a pretty big need. Let me check out the draft board, see if there's anyone worth trading up for. Tackle at number one. Something you never see. Jazir Walford. His name... His first name looks way too close to Jizz, and I'm an immature child, so I find that hilarious. There's some decent players, though. James Hazelwood might have to be my pick. This dude is 6'6", 247, and ran 4'4", 2. Unreal. That's like almost Montez Sweat levels of unbelievable. 
except Montez Sweat was 260 when he did it. So that's the big difference there. Also, stud tight end in the fourth might be worth looking at. I really like this draft class a lot. I don't think I'm really going to be able to trade up for any of these guys. I mean, eh, maybe. And I'm not even sure who it would be. I don't think I can trade up into the top 10. I think there's some really good players in this class, though. Not that one. Larry Miner, 77 overall to the Jets there. Like, Devin Vincent looks really good. Just doesn't really fit our scheme, even though he looks really, really good. So I'm in a bit of a tough spot. I really am. Okay, finally got a trade to work. Josh Jones is gone. You know, he's a really like solid up-and-coming tackle who's young. But we just don't need him since getting Mitchell Schwartz. We're getting a uh, first-round pick back, number 14. And we are trading away a second-round pick next year and a fifth this year. Now, the Giants pick one spot ahead of us in this scenario. And there's a good chance that they take Devin Vincent, which would uh, be sad for me. But I can't trade up another spot. They go Tommy Foreman, 78 overall receiver from Notre Dame. That is a uh, really solid. I'm going to take... Devin Vincent here like maybe he ends up playing outside linebacker for me but I think he also could become my Chandler Jones replacement in a year or two so I'm gonna bet high he is number four in the draft unfortunately only normal development number 21 or 21 years old number four in the draft 77 overall I think I got those out of the way uh, 82 speed 82 finesse moves acceleration's really high tackling is good pursuits pretty high well-rounded definitely solid not gonna play right away because we don't need him to but i think it's a solid pick for the future and now i'm gonna try and trade jalen thompson for a pick uh near the top of the second round probably jalen thompson and a future fourth gets me number 35 overall which is number three overall in the second round so we're gonna go ahead and simulate up to that spot and see if any decent players available hopefully better than that last guy 62 overall at the top of the second jeez there's Rashawn Hendricks. I looked at this guy. He looked pretty solid as someone that I could move over to D-tackle. Ooh, that might have to be the pick. How's that middle linebacker looking? Is he still available? Oh, he got drafted. It's annoying. Yeah, so Rashawn Hendricks is just the easy pickup here. Welcome to the team. Future defensive tackle, Rashawn Hendricks. Number 11 in the class. Really solid pickup for a mid-first rounder. Only normal dev. 75 overall, though, is quite good. Block shedding's high. Speed's high. Power and finesse moves are pretty well-balanced. Strength's pretty good. Like, Rashawn Hendricks is just a really solid player. Might even be a higher overall at D-tackle. Might still be about the same, though. So, it, it, it's not going to matter too much. Round two, we're going to go with Tyreek Wilbur. Looks to be a pretty good player for this pick. Man, 5'11", 177. Only normal dev. Number 16 in the class, though, is quite good. He could easily be my third option at receiver. However, I also want to make a move up not necessarily to the top of the third, but somewhere near there, maybe like number seven overall. I want that tight end. I want that tight end in the draft who seems uh, very, very solid. Donovan Stewart, and he really could go at any moment. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make the move now. Leakai Fotu actually has value. Uh, we we can definitely make this work. It's gonna be Leakai Fotu a sixth, and hopefully not a future third. It's gonna have to be. Actually, you know what? Let me just do a straight swap. Leakai Fotu and a 2023 third for a current third from the Bears to take this backup tight end. You know what? It could be valuable. All right. So we're taking him. Donovan Stewart, 73 overall, number 21 in the class. Good value. Took him at 66. Only normal dev. Only 85 speed. Oh, this is not the tight end that ran 442. All right. So never mind. But pretty good. So this was a really, really good draft class. I'm curious as to see if the receiver was the best player. And tied for, there's Tommy Foreman out of Notre Dame. He looks really, really good. Kind of looks like Dennis Peoples when we drafted him in Jags franchise. If you guys watched that series, he looks like unbelievably good. Really, really solid. 97 change of direction. But it, this is why Madden's so stupid and unrealistic. The Giants would never have a good playmaker like that. Okay, team is looking quite solid, I would say. Do I still want to start Brevin Jordan? Or do I, or I think I go with the younger scheme fit tight end in first name Stewart, who's my current fullback. 
Ah, whatever. He'll stay where he is. And then defensively, ooh, skill point for Kenneth Murray. Gotta love the scheme fit as well. And I'm gonna move over the end I drafted to play D-Tackle. Hendricks to D-Tackle. It's an upgrade. I hope his overall goes up because that would make this draft pick even better. If he goes up to like a 77, that would be just phenomenal. I think it's just still gonna stay at 75 though. That would be my guess. And it does, but it, it's an upgrade over Zach Allen. Scheme fit as well. Defense looking spectacular. We're just in a great position. I think I want to give Chandler Jones and not Buda Baker the X Factor. So I'm going to have to strip that away. Okay, so I think, do I get crazy and put Tyreek Wilbur in the slot? I kind of want to. I feel like he could be really, really good. I'm going to do that. We're going to juice his numbers. And I will see you guys at the midseason mark. JJ Watt is going to be a free agent. Do I want to extend him? Probably. I only signed Mitchell Schwartz to a one-year deal. That was foolish. Levante David's there. Byron Murphy. DJ Humphreys. Okay, a lot of guys. Lamont Guy Lard as well. Some big-time players. We are 5-3. and three, Currently doing quite well in the NFC West, I would say. What's our money situation going to be like? Hopefully, it's like over 70 mil when I go to re-sign J.J. Watt. It's not even close. Okay, he's going to be a really massive problem. I cannot give him 20 mil. That's going to be a big issue. Okay, we're going to have to figure out what to do with that. Because the rest of these guys are not going to be cheap either. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Hey, hey I'm not freaking out. We're fine. Byron Murphy will be the first one. We'll sign him. Levante David, I should probably just let go. I'm not paying him close to that. DJ Humphreys is pretty expensive, but I just kind of need him. Five-year deal. He wants more money. You don't deserve it. It's the J.J. Watt rebuild, man. I got to give him a contract. This is ridiculous, though. He's back for the next two years. That's so much money. <laughs> oh, man. We're going to be screwed. Ooh, first round bye. Got to love it. Went 12-4, and four, won the division pretty easily. 17th best offense. Kyler Murray looks like was better in terms of touchdowns. Our defense was great, but uh, the yards went down. Hopefully, that's because Aaron Jones stole them. No. Hmm. Just less offensive opportunities, maybe. Jones was good in, you know, almost no carries, based on how good he is. Receiving. Of course, the rookie Tyreek Wilbur stole the show. 1,100-plus yards, 11 touchdowns as a rookie because he was in the slot. We wanted him to play well. That's what you do. You put him in the slot. We're going to upgrade route runner. That's kind of like his one downfall at the moment. So medium route running goes up by two. That's nice. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins was okay. Jalen Waddle was, you know, all right. We don't throw the ball that much to our best players. Kind of surprising. And then defensively, Byron Murphy had 118 tackles. That's too many. That's too many for a corner. Why are you getting that many? Rashawn Hendricks, the rookie D-tackle, leads our team in tackles for loss with 13. Looks like the QB sacks went down a lot. But still, you know, very productive for the whole team as a whole, I'd say. 14.5 Chandler Jones, 9.5 for J.J. Watt. 6.5 for Redick, also a pick. 6 for Isaiah Simmons. 6 for Kenneth Murray. 5 for Rashawn Hendricks. Am I missing someone? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I think the big players are taken care of. Shaq Griffin, four picks. Three for Levante David. Three for Desmond King. Looks like our defense was very, very good as Russell Wilson wins MVP. Uh, no Cardinals in there at all. And then NFC Offense Player of the Year, Russell Wilson. Kyler Murray at five. Defense Player of the Year is Aaron Donald. No Cardinals. Offense Rookie of the Year is Tyreek Wilbur. Beats out the now 85 overall receiver for the Giants. Donovan Stewart, the tight end at number 10. Defense Rookie of the Year is James Hazelwood. He's the linebacker I wanted to draft but was gone at the top of the second. So we took Rashawn Hendricks instead who... Goes to number three. Hazelwood wouldn't have played for me right away, but he might have been good in like two years with Levante David's gone, which is going to be this upcoming year after this playoff run. I'd like to see us go deep, but we got a lot of upgrades here. We'll have the CPU handle it and see who we play in the divisional. Come on, Cardinals. It's the Seattle Seahawks. Kind of worried about that, to be honest. They're, uh, they're a solid team. They have the MVP on their team. We beat him, though. 22-17. It's a conference championship. I'm going to upgrade Devin Vincent. Um, 
He's going to end up playing defensive end. I'm just going to get run stopper up just because he's going to need to be able to do that when he changes position. So plus three block shedding is kind of nice. And he hasn't really even played too much, I would say, already. We'll do man coverage for Shaquille Griffin. And then we're going to hop in. I want to make sure we get to the... Um, nice start out name there. I want to make sure we get to the Super Bowl. It's my biggest goal. We're 90 overall. Some people say they don't like it when I jump in. But, like, the whole point of the rebuild is to see the team building process. I say the record's kind of irrelevant. But we like to see the team perform. It kind of makes it feel a lot better. And uh, it's also fun to see the players that we draft actually play on the field with each other. And I don't always jump in, but I do think that makes it a little bit fun. As the Cowboys are out to an early 7-0 lead, we need our offense to actually step up in the playoffs the way they did not last year. We're going to tie things up at 14 and keep the Cowboys out of the end zone for a little while longer. They do end up scoring again. 21-17 now into the second half. We need our offense to step up. That's a big score. Still down by one, though. Get the football back and score. We're up 26, but the Cowboys make it 27-26. And we're on defense now. What happened? Did Kyler Murray turn over the football? Oh, Kyler, please. He's had a terrible game. Just awful. No touchdowns and one interception. And we're going to have to make a big play on defense. Our defense is amazing. But a touchdown pretty much would win Dallas the game. And Ezekiel Elliott's going to get him real close to this first down. Third and one. Not a ton of time. We really need to stop here. We really need to stop. Someone's got to make a play. And no one shed. No one shed. Big hit! Oh, you got a fumble there. If we get the football back, we might have 30 seconds to score. Kind of like best case scenario. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what the uh, Cowboys do here on 3rd and 12. Looks like they're just still going to run the football. I need a block shed and a fumble. There's J.J. Watt. And that is going to bring up 4th down. Yeah, we're going to get the football with almost no time. Unless we get like a miracle block. And even so, it's still going to be very, very hard. Kick is up and good. 25 seconds to score a touchdown. Crazier things have happened. I can't believe I tried to jump in on offense. We were on defense. Late turnovers are going to lose us this game. Need a big return from Wilbur. Had a great rookie year. He's going to break a tackle. Okay. 20 seconds to go 71 yards. We have DeAndre Hopkins. We have Jalen Waddell. We've got some great receivers. We just need uh, we need time. I feel like scrambling with Kyler Murray could also be a really good move. Yeah, I'm not even sure how we do this here. We're just going to be in a really, really tough spot. I kind of want to streak somebody. I'm going to bring Jalen Waddell over to that left side. Change things up, and he's going to get streaked. We need him to win deep. That'll give us the best chance. Going deep. Just got to catch it. Jalen Waddle snags it. That's going to be the game. There's no way we can get up to the line in time. 21 second runoff. It was never going to happen. I maybe needed to go outside with that and then throw a Hail Mary. Uh, just wasn't meant to be, man. Wasn't meant to be. Look at Kyler Murray. 22 of 42. 281. And a lot of that was that 50 yard bomb to Jalen Waddle. No touchdowns and an interception. You can't have an interception late in the game and expect to win when it's really close like that. And it's another year where we come up just short in the NFC Championship, looking like the current Packers. It's not good. The Browns win another Super Bowl. Let me see some dev trait increases. I'd love to see my receiver get star. And he did. There we go, Wilbur. I mean, who needs uh, Christian Kirk anyway? Got to do route runner again on Tyreek Wilbur. And uh, he's getting better in that regard. He looks really, really good. But other than that, I don't really see any increases on offense. Kind of disappointing. And then defensively, Isaiah Simmons goes up to Superstar X Factor. So that is a really nice one. But that is the only thing that changes. Levante David's going to be out of the league. Well, that's not true. He'll be off the team, though. Levante David, I just can't sign back. DJ Humphreys, we can afford. It looks like Mitchell Schwartz retired. 
So that kind of puts me in a bind at right tackle, which means DJ Humphreys needs to be signed even more. Wants a higher salary, so we'll go ahead and do that. Bump that up a little bit. Humphreys is back. Andy Isabella we don't need. Zach Allen we don't need. Lamont Guy Large, my starting center. He's not that good, but we don't really have a ton of options. He's not interested in signing. Am I going to franchise tag a center? We have no money anyway. It doesn't matter. Yes, nah. We'll, we'll figure something out. Went after Lamont Guy Lard and he declined. Mean. Ah, Jay Cutler made it into the draft. That's fun. We need a linebacker, though. There's some decent one. Ooh, early first round. That'll do. Ben Stuber. Ooh, really good center available. That's even going to be an upgrade on Lamont Guy Lard. So, I will take that all day. George Irons don't really need. Need the center. Stuber at 16. I'm going to have to trade up for that. All right, I think number 11 is going to be my trade-up spot. I just don't want a super going when he can be really, really good. So let's make a move with the Packers trading up. I also want to keep number 30. Who's the other guy? Oh, yeah, I want the center. That's right. Oh, yeah, I don't have a right tackle because Mitchell Schwartz retired. That's, uh, that's something. Okay, Richard Lawrence, a fifth and a future three, gets me number 34 overall from whoever i don't even remember at this point uh, i know it happened moments ago it's concerning i should see a medical professional but we need to replace well vincent can be traded we need to replace levante david with ben stuber i need to trade up to number 11 and then offensively not having a right tackle could be stinky i'm tempted to trade travis Etienne if i'm honest it's going to be two ones, one this year, one next year, and a seventh for number 11 overall from the Packers. I think this is honestly the missing piece of our team. It's taking a middle linebacker. We're going to move him over to outside linebacker. His overall should go up, and he already looks really good. So if he's like a 74, and I think he's going to be even higher. If he's like a 74, though, he's going to move up to about a 76, 77 overall. So we might be drafting near an 80 overall player here, depending on how good this guy is. He's a 75 overall star or better development that's wonderful and he'll be like a 77 overall outside linebacker 88 speed 88 tackle he's a coverage linebacker style and he can't do that at all but really really good player finally star or better development instant starting outside linebacker and then with the second pick of round two i'm absolutely going to take that center he looks amazing maybe i even have to take both those centers because I have no right tackle, and one of them could slide over. Not having a right tackle is kind of bad. <laughs> After my in-depth analysis. Nah, Jack Burton just has to be the pick. Early first round guy. Kind of built like a tackle, honestly. 6'5", 318. I'll consider it. He's a 76 overall. Only normal development, but the number four overall player in the entire draft. He looks amazing. That might be my new right tackle. But then, I don't have a center. So there's no player available really worth taking. I'm just going to take this linebacker. He's uh, pretty bad, but he accelerates quickly. So as bad as he is, he gets to that level at the fastest speed of anyone. He's great. All right, are there any good free agents? Kind of, but I need some on offense. Brian Allen. Is that my new starting center? Man, that's sad. John Middleton, I can't even afford. He's only 297 at left tackle. He looks okay. I got to clear some salary. I think I want him because he's 23. I'll move him over to center. All right, made some room. And we are going to sign John Middleton. We'll figure something out. We just need this offense to stay together a little bit. And Mitchell Schwartz retiring puts me in a little bit of a bind. But we're going to work out of it. Ooh, Burton's a 78 overall tackle. Say less. Yep, Stuber is a 77 overall outside linebacker. Easy fill-in. I'm holding on to the guy I traded up for last year. You know, the plan is to have him play and replace Chandler Jones, but we're probably not going to end up going that deep into the franchise. He's an 89 overall. There's really no reason to uh, have Vincent play at any point. I guess he'll just be a backup for now. I am going to move him down to the defensive line just in case he comes in at some point. He's not a linebacker. I'm putting DeAndre Hopkins in the slot. He should go off. I'll see you at the midseason mark. This is year three. What's our record? 8-0. Hey, that's not too bad. I'll uh, I'll take that. 
We've had some decently close games, except for the one against the 49ers where we crushed them 38 to nothing. Man, our defense is just top notch. Do I even worry about re-signing? Oh, DeAndre Hopkins regressed down to a 98. Well, that's going to go back up. Now he's a scheme fit, 99 overall route runner. Just perfect. Okay. Nuke is still a monster. We will go ahead and upgrade the full team. And is there anything I need to do with Coach XP? Probably not. Running back training boost is fine. And I don't think we're going to end up having a perfect season. That would be super, super surprising. We can't afford Kyler Murray even at all, by the way. Uh, I'm going to end up franchise tagging him so that I can afford him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Huh? Huh? He just signed a one-year deal for like nine mil. Okay, that's that's interesting, I guess. I'll see for the playoffs. What just happened? You know, that's a team player right there. Kyler Murray saying, hey, I'm going to take a one-year contract, no job security, no real money, when he can earn like 20 more mil than that in a year. And he's like, I, I just want to be here in Arizona and win and contribute to the cause. What a guy. We lost in week 17 to the Giants, and it was our only loss of the year. We went 15-1. and one. Second best offense in the league. Kyler Murray was very, very good with DeAndre Hopkins in the slot. Our defense was first in the league. Murray was unreal. 4,400 yards, 41 touchdowns, and only six interceptions. He's going to go up to superstar X-Factor. He's looking very, very good. And then rushing, Aaron Jones was really good. 1,100 yards, only four TDs. ETN had seven. Receiving, DeAndre Hopkins, 1,500 yards, 16 TDs. Jalen Waddell, 900 plus yards, seven touchdowns. Tyreek Wilbur was good. Brevin Jordan was good. And then defensively, no one had over 100 tackles. But Chandler Jones, 13 tackles for loss, led the team. He also had 14 sacks, which led the team. 13 for Reddick, nine for Watt, six and a half for Simmons, five and a half for Sean Hendricks, three for Buda Baker, even. Stuber didn't look like he even played all that much. Byron Murphy led the team in picks with three. And then yearly award, show me MVP. Kyler Murray wins MVP. NFC Offense Player of the Year is also Kyler Murray. Defense Player of the Year is back-to-back -back Aaron Donald victories. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Kenny Cutler, a.k.a. Jay Cutler, as I call them. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Jace Norton, the linebacker that went at number four overall. Ben Stuber at number eight. He's up to an 80, though, so I can't really complain about that. We had just this unbelievable year. 15-1. I'll tell you, though, that uh, week 17 loss to the Giants is brutal. Oh, yeah, what's Ben Stuber's dev trait? Probably star, because I just upgraded him. He went over the 80 threshold and didn't change. He's going to be star. Oh, he's superstar. Why did it show up any, like, superstar ability? Because maybe he already had it. Give him a secure tackler. Ben Stuber was superstar dev. We made the perfect decision to trade up for him. Oh, this has to be a Super Bowl team. This team is unbelievable, except our, offens our offensive line is just not good. But the team in general is incredible. Please just don't lose. It's the Cowboys in the divisional. I think we lost to them in the conference championship last year. No repeats. Uh, I'll do one more year. Jesus Christ. Cowboys beat the Chiefs 39-36 in the Super Bowl. Is there anyone that I need? Oh, man. No. These free agents are terrible or pending free agents. John Middleton started at center for us. I could sign him back. He's pretty cheap. I could also just get the best uh, offensive lineman in free agency, but I'm going to bring him back just in case. And we are set up big time. Hopefully, J.J. Watt didn't retire. We're an 89 overall offense. What changed? Kyler Murray did not go up to Superstar X Factor after winning MVP. That's just unbelievable. How does that happen? Or how does that not happen? Ooh, throw power goes up. Cool. Team looks really, really good. Defensively, show me JJ Watt. Thank you. Oh, no. Chandler Jones retired. We have Vincent there to take his place. It's not exactly the same, but he could be pretty good. Only normal development kind of sucks. But he looks really solid. So you never know. And then a free agency. I don't think we focus on edge. It's pretty pretty good defensive tackle. And Chris Jones, who could move J.J. Watt outside. That's an option. But I think we, we focus on O-line. Let's get Corey Lindsley. Corey Lindsley rejected. Uh, what are you going to do, I guess? That's uh, pretty frustrating, though. We did get J.C. Treader, though. I guess that's a decent consolation prize. 
No first round pick, because we uh, traded that to get players who have helped us win, but not win enough. So maybe this next player is the big difference maker. I doubt it though. We'll see if anyone's worth taking. Only guy worth taking is a tight end, Greg Lincoln. 72 overall, normal dev. Looks like the last tight end we took, to be honest. And that is going to do it for this draft. Let the CPU handle the rest. Ooh, the money badgers in free agency. Money, new starting kicker. Ooh, Isaiah Simmons. Has he been Superstar X Factor? He might have been. Uh, I do not want him rushing the passer. Why would Vincent not be over him? Come on, game. So we're really going to need that defensive end we drafted a couple years ago to take a big step up. He's got big shoes to feel. To, big shoes to feel. Chandler Jones is a very good player no one team. All right. I don't know where that came from when I said feel to, for, instead of fill. But Devin Vincent, he looks pretty good. But uh, he's, not, he's not Chandler Jones. He's like, what, minus 10 overall? Only normal development. It's going to take a lot to get him to uh, be decently high overall. So we need to put up big sack numbers, big numbers in general, get your overall up, and help us win a damn championship with J.J. Watt. Final year, let's get it. See you at the midseason mark. Okay, not going to worry about contract extensions, anything like that. I will upgrade the team, though, and show you that our record is 5-3, and three, second in the NFC West. If we miss the playoffs with this team, I'm going to scream into a baby's face. I'm going to upgrade punting training boost. It's important, somebody thinks. And we'll simulate to the playoffs. First round bye. I love it. 12-4. and four, 24th best offense. Looks like Kyler Murray took a step back. He wasn't really too good. Aaron Jones was. He's getting slightly more carries. Put up 1,200 yards, 12 TDs. ETN with 12 touchdowns. Great for backup running back. And then Tyreek Wilbur was in the slot. That definitely hurt us because DeAndre Hopkins had no offensive production at all. So Wilbur's going to go back down. That's unfortunate. Look at the season for Isaiah Simmons. 135 tackles, 8 for loss, 7 sacks, 2 picks. That's defensive player of the year type stuff. J.J. Watt has a breakout season at age 35 after winning a couple defensive player of the years. 19 tackles for loss on 76 total tackles, 18 and a half sacks. 13 and a half for Redick, 11 from Devin Vincent, 7 for Simmons, 3 and a half for Kenneth Murray, 3 for Cameron Carey. Okay. Interceptions, Buda Baker at 5, 3 for Byron Murphy. And then yearly awards, Russell Wilson wins MVP. No Kyler. I got to put uh, DeAndre Hopkins in the slot so we have a chance. NFC Offense Player of the Year, Russell Wilson. No Kyler Murray anywhere? I had to have missed him. I didn't. Defense Player of the Year, J.J. Watt. That's what we like to see in the J.J. Watt Cardinals rebuild. Isaiah Simmons at number two. So we have the two best defensive players in the league this year. And then offensive rookie of the year, Kyle Walker. A couple guys in there from the Cardinals. Defensive rookie of the year, Trey Franklin. No Cardinals. But all right. That is just fantastic. I got to put DeAndre Hopkins in the slot. I also have to go downstairs and get my DoorDash. Uh, Franklin's here is his name. I hope he looks like the cartoon character turtle, Franklin. That'd be hilarious. I'll get a picture of him. I'll, I'll bring him upstairs, get him in the video. So I'll be back in a second. So Franklin had uh, no care to be in my video. Reminded me it was a pandemic. Loser. But we're going to go to the divisional round of the playoffs where we face the 8-8 eight and eight Chicago Bears. They just snuck into the playoffs. J.J. Watt is now a scheme fit. Perfect. I'm worried about this one, though. The Bears are sometimes pretty nasty in simulation. Their offense can be really, really good. I'm worried about it. We got home field advantage for what it's worth, and we're going home. <sighs> Fun. Gotta love when a great team comes together and performs super, super well as uh, we miss the playoffs somehow, man, or miss the uh, opportunity to compete even in the divisional round of the playoffs. Or no, actually, we had a first round by, so it was the divisional. You don't make it to the conference championship. Don't make it to the Super Bowl. The final team is a 93 overall, 93 offense. 95 defense the offense was really really good and the defense was even better vincent even got up to star dev this team is set up for great things in the future the linebacking core is super young and talented same thing at cornerback the defensive line is in a similar spot like reddick at this point is 30 but he's still pretty good and pretty productive jj watts older but 
This team could easily compete to win a Super Bowl in like the next two or three years, even in the game. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. It would help me out a lot as we push for 300,000. Seems so crazy to say, but we're so close. Thank you so much for watching, though. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Taking it back to the house, defense a joke, I'm laughing so loud.